Good afternoon. Uh, today is Monday, October 23rd of the year 2023. Can't believe this year is almost over. Um, I wanted to share a couple of things with you guys. Um, three topics that I want to touch on. One, I want to touch more in detail. The other two, just briefly. Um, but before I do that, I want to kindly ask if uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you can kindly do so. I'm trying to get my subscriber count up. Um, uh, as I mentioned to a couple of friends yesterday, uh, I've finally been monetized and um, whatever money I make on uh, my channel, I, uh, I'm going to use it for, for further in the kingdom of God. For um, my church, you know, we, we have a building fund going for the missionaries who are out in the field, um, overseas, you know, and other nations sharing the good news. So uh, those are the things that that's what I want to do with uh, whatever money I make. Um, God has given me this platform not for me to get rich or for me to make money. He's already blessed me sufficiently or more, more than sufficiently, abundantly. So um, I just uh, want to ask you if you can subscribe to my channel and also uh, hit the, no the like button and the notification bell so you can be reminded whenever I, uh, I post the videos. Um, it's the only way that the video will get sent out to the algorithm with the likes and the views. Um, and also, if you're going to view the video, um, it's got to be more than like a minute. I know most people think they just go in and that's it. Now, uh, YouTube only goes based on how long a video gets watched. So anyway, that's the, that's that. Put that aside. So the things that I wanted to share today is um, the first thing is the rapture. We know that Jesus tells us of that day and hour, no one knows. Okay. So I'm going to read really quickly what I wrote. For decades, if not for centuries, believers have been trying to predict or determine the timing of the rapture. And the predictions seem to become more and more, especially since many of the end times events prophesied in scripture seem to be coming to pass. And yes, even in spite of Jesus' own words that at that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels nor the son, but only the father. Countless believers who claim to believe every single word of scripture still try to come up with that day, which to me, in essence, it seems as if they really, truly don't believe every word that scripture says, because that's what Jesus says. But I've had something running through my mind lately, and I, for some reason, I've been really caught up in the book of Romans, especially in particular chapter 10 and 11. But um, so... My the thing that's been going through my mind, I was thinking about it and more in detail. I was thinking about it this past weekend. What if the rapture is not determined on a date as many of us think, but instead, what if it's determined on a number? What if the rapture will happen when that last unbelieving Gentile finally comes to Jesus? That's a predetermined number that only the Father knows. So it's not based on a date, but rather on a number, okay? That's what if, okay? So before everybody goes off on common sense, there's this something I've just been thinking. What if it's that? Because we read in Romans 11.25 where it says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Now, I'm going to get off topic for a second here. And um, if you ever encounter uh, someone who ascribes to replacement theology, meaning that God is done with, with the Jews, with Israel, and that he's only dealing now with the church, I, I would tell you to send them to Romans chapter 11, read Romans chapter 11, and ask them to explain to you what Romans chapter 11 talks about. God is not done with the Jews. As a matter of fact, I believe that on October 7th of this year, we know what happened when, you know, what happened in Gaza. As a, on October 7th of this year, he, being God, began his final chapter for the Jews. It's just my personal opinion, my personal belief. So my question to you is, what are you doing to facilitate that number being fulfilled? So many Christians are anxious for the Lord to return. And I'm sure that the Lord wants to return to fix the mess that humanity has made of this world. But what are you doing to speed up that process? That is, if the rapture is based on a number and not a date. Are you sharing the gospel with others? Are you adding to that number 
Only by sharing the gospel can we all add to the church. Only by sharing the gospel can we all be part of that fullness coming to fruition. The Father's greatest desire is that all would come to repentance and be saved. We know that all won't be saved. That's a sad reality. We, all, we know that all won't be saved. Only the number that the Father has predetermined. But all have the opportunity to be saved. But how can they be saved if they don't know about the Savior? So we read in Romans chapter 10, my two favorite verses in the last couple of months. In verse 14 and 15, it says, How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? So instead of sitting in there and praying, as sometimes I do, not every day, but once in a blue moon, I'll do it. Instead of sitting there and praying, come Lord Jesus, why don't you get up and be obedient to the Great Commission? Where Jesus sent us, or better said, commanded us to share the gospel. Go and be part of the fulfilling of that fullness. It is my belief that these believers who are out there obediently sharing the gospel, whether it's with, a whole, whether it's with people in your own family, sharing it with your co-workers, people in school, or whether you're out in the nations, you know, doing a greater ministry, uh, ministry you know, whatever you're doing, it is my belief that these people are the ones that are going to heal those beautiful, precious words from the Lord's mouth when he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. And you can read that in Luke. I'm not saying that you have to do this to be saved. I'm not saying that you have to go and share the gospel and everything to be saved. But that's a topic for another video that we can get into details. So that's the first thing I wanted to discuss. Um, the second thing I wanted to discuss is I wanted to say that it, it saddens me. And it breaks my heart when I see so many believers using their time, their energy, and their resources towards arguing amongst each other because of minor doctoral differences. I see some videos and brothers just knocking, and sisters just knocking each other and just knocking each other over. I don't say stupidest, but things that at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it all really doesn't matter. So when I see this, I can't help but think of, of the disciples who would spend time squabbling about trivial things like when we read in Luke 24, 24, which uh, they start arguing amongst each other, like who's the greatest amongst us? Okay, you can go read that in, in Luke 24. So that takes energy. And, you know, take, so I'm saying, so take that energy that, that, they're you, that you're using or they're using to argue amongst each other and put it towards adding to the church, not dividing the church, to bring more people to Christ instead of chasing more people away. So anyway, that's what I want to touch on that. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on was uh, the Palestinians and the Israelites, uh, what's happening in, in Gaza and Israel. So I didn't write anything down because I can make a video that's three hours long just based on this. But I, what I wanted to say is I look at a friend, a friend of mine shared a video with me and a whole bunch of clips, compilations of people in the United States, just in the United States, of all the major cities of people protesting and they're standing up for Palestine. OK, and so I'm looking at some of the signs and a lot of these signs say free Palestine, free Palestine. And yeah, I agree with them. Palestine should be free, but not from the Jews, not from Israel. Palestine needs to be freed from Hamas, from the terrorists. OK, from that group that they voted in, because half of the people in Palestine don't agree with Hamas. Half of them don't want them there. And they're really the ones that are keeping the people from Palestine of the Palestinians in bondage. It's not the Israelites. And I watched this video on Prager University. I wish I could find it again. I, I can't find it, but it was about how many times Israel had offered to give land to the Palestinians. And the land that they offered many times was 10 times bigger than the land that they have now. And to recognize them as their own state. And many and every single time, they said no. They said no. They said no. Because it's a sad reality. The Muslim nations, they're only a major goal. Their only goal, okay? And I'm not saying it's every every Muslim, but in, in general, their, their thing is to wipe Israel off the face of, face of the earth. That They won't stop until every Jew on this planet is gone. 
Well, that, we know that's never going to happen. So when I see these people in my country, the United States of America, and most of them are young students, young people out there with signs and banners of, you know, this and that. And, and I look and I say, they're so ignorant. They have no idea what they're out there protesting. They, they have no clue. They have no clue. If you go and ask them, I guarantee you, nine out of ten of them will, will tell you they don't know why they're there. Or why, why, oh, free Palestine. Well, why? Why Why do they need to be freed? What are they in prison? Why are they enslaved? By who? And ask these questions. I guarantee you, nine out of ten of them won't be able to answer it. So I said to my friend, I said, the scary thing about these videos that you're sending me, this, this compilation of video, the scariest thing is this. Half of the people that are there protesting have no idea what they're protesting about. And that's scary in itself. And even scarier, is, scarier than that is the other half that do know why they're there want exactly what I said, to wipe Israel, to wipe the Jews off of the face of the earth. And that's even scarier. So, I mean, when I see people protesting things and they have no idea, I mean, I watch videos of, of people that go out in the streets and they're asking questions, they're just interviewing people and they're asking them questions like, oh, what's the capital of this state or what's the capital of the country or just basic things that a 10 year old, 10 year old, five year old should know they, and they don't know. I, I'm shocked. I'm like, these are, these are college students. These are adults, Americans who have no idea what their own state capital is, what their own national capital is. They don't even have any idea where an ocean is, what oceans where. And it scares me that these people are the, one, the ones that are out there protesting. So anyway, um, I want to stop here because, like I said, I don't want this video to be too long. But educate yourself. Before you start taking a side on anything, guys, on anything, just educate yourself and find out, hey, what am I standing for? Why am I choosing sides here? Why am I protesting against this or for this? Why? Educate yourself for it. Don't be foolish and be out there because then if somebody asks you, you're going to say, oh, I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> let me stop here before this video gets too long. God bless you, my friends. And as I said um, yesterday's video, I'm going to have a, at least one video every day uh, this week because this past weekend, the Lord just kept putting things on my heart and I just kept writing notes while I was at camp. Just writing notes and notes and then I have a lot. So... Anyway, God bless you, my friends. Take care.